Thank you for turning to page 121. Today I'm going to feature uh, something that uh, a lot of people don't consider when they're doing a Traveler game, and that is the Starship as a non-player character. Book 2 of the original set is Starships. Mongoose features a large section of Starships, plus, of course, High Guard, uh, in virtually every edition of Traveler. Now, I realize the Starships can be regarded as just a means to get from point A to point B, or a space station, just to be the setting for the campaign or the game, but I want to show how the ship itself can take on kind of a pseudo-life and become a non-player character in your campaign. And I'm going to use some examples from TV and movies to illustrate my point. It's easier to use TV and movies than it is most novels. Uh, but I want to just show how the ship takes on a life of its own and becomes as important as that little piece of paper that the player uh, has representing them in the game. So today on page 121, the Starship as a non-player character. The Starship as a non-player character in your Traveler campaign. I realize this is not a, a brand new idea or one that I innovated somehow or anything like that, nor do I claim it to be. I simply thought it would be an interesting topic because I, I, I would be willing to wager a lot of uh, Traveler GMs don't think of the possibility of the Starship taking on its own life. As I said, well, this is a great shot of one of the prettiest depictions, the Empress Barava. This is from the Traveler customizable card game. It's the playmat for it. I use these playmats a ton. I have a uh, uh, table out on our back porch, our screened-in porch that I read at very often, and I'll use one of these as basically a placemat. Uh, also, it's very handy because it's got all the icons and stuff that you need for the to play the game. I'll show those at the bottom. There we go. There's all the icons you need to play the game. I mention this because a lot of people have asked me what this picture is, uh, where I got it from, and that's where. These are available through the Traveler Customizable Card Game website. Just Google that, Tra Cust Traveler Customizable Card Game. It'll take you right there. Also, you can find them on uh, secondary markets like Miniature Market, which is where I got this guy. I think I paid $8. And uh, eBay, of course, has several. There were six or eight different versions of these. I have two. Uh, but anyway, they're pretty, and they work great as placemats. A uh, nice reading backdrop for you. But back to the topic at hand, which is Starships. Book two is Starships, and it tells us in Traveler how to create our Starships. And then, of course, later on in uh, Classic Traveler, we got the epic High Guard book, which showed us how to make all kinds of Starships or spaceships. difference between a Starship and a spaceship, of course, spaceship is anything that can go into outer space but can't essentially go faster than light. A starship can go faster than light. That's a very simplified explanation for the difference between the terms. I'm going to be discussing starships primarily today. So basically, in my experience, starships pop up everywhere in Traveler. Why, look at this. It's right there. Free Trader Beowulf, sitting right back there in the background. We've got a nice pirate ship depicted right there. Traveler Chronicle gives us yet another starship that I don't know. And then, of course, the ever-famous, ever-popular Azanti High Lightning. I featured Azanti High Lightning on its own video a couple of months ago on the channel. So basically, the idea is that your player characters develop such an affinity for the starship that it takes on a life of its own. It becomes uh, a non-player character. It becomes part of the crew which is a strange concept, but actually makes a ton of sense. Uh, for centuries, men at sea have called their ships she, because she is somebody you can care for and take care of, and you love and they love you back. Uh, it's just how it's been. I don't know if ships are still commonly referred to as she or if that has changed. I just know historically ships were crewed by men, and they were referred to as she. In uh, television... There are many examples of the ship itself becoming a non-player character, an actual character in the, in the series. The Enterprise, in the original class, uh, Star Trek, Captain Kirk, his, his absolute fanatical devotion to the Enterprise specifically, uh, that ship became a living thing in the series. If you follow the entire series, and even through the first three movies, uh, the Enterprise is very much a character in the show, and I know that was intentional, and it was well ahead of its time. 
I love the idea that the Enterprise was a character in Captain Kirk's first and true love. Admiral Adama, Adama in Battlestar Galactica, we have the same kind of relationship. His entire identity is wrapped up in Galactica. We have Captain Sheridan in Babylon 5. Now, Babylon 5, of course, is a space station, but you got much the same flavor. Now, you have the idea that if Sheridan were to be assigned something else, he'd miss Babylon 5, but it is still part of him, and the station itself has so many different things, the Zocalo, the different color levels, things like that, that it took on a life of its own in the series. And again, I thought that was very well done. Uh, and of course, we have Mal Reynolds with Serenity. There's no question Serenity is a big chunk of Mal Reynolds, and uh, it absolutely is a character throughout the series. And then, of course, in a more recent example, we have The Expanse with Arasananti. The Rossi. The entire crew views the Rossi as not only their home, but as a, a crewman, a, a member of their crew, somebody they take care of, somebody that they love. So I've always loved that in science fiction, and I've always loved that uh, it's been brought out in TV and film. But how do you bring it out in your player characters? How do you make your player characters start to actually regard the ship as one of the crew, as a non-player character? The way I found, the best way, well, um, I'll start with the way that didn't seem to work in my experience. What doesn't work in my experience is the venerable, ever fun, great way to start a campaign, scout ship. When the crew is leased to scout ship or it's on loan and, and the crew gets it as a mustering out benefit for one of the scout characters, it's certainly a welcome boon for the group. But because it's not theirs... I've never had a crew really bond with the scout ship. I've done a number of campaigns where the, they have started out with the scout ship and then they've graduated to their own vessel. And that's where the, the personalization and the love comes in when they actually have to pay their hard earned money to get the ship. And then of course, maintain the ship. And you know, there are times the ship is the only thing between them and certain death. And they're, they're only, sometimes that, they're the only ones between the ship and certain death. And the, the characters do start to bond with the ship at that point. It becomes more than a piece of paper. I would actually get phone calls between games asking, what if we could do this with the ship? Or can we add this? Well, how much would it cost to do this? Uh, I've even had uh, players in my game, uh, and my sons would count in this too, uh, where they would actually come over or we would talk between games about the ship, what we're going to do to make the ship better, work better, just just be more of a thing. And that's when I can tell that the ship is starting to take on a life of its own and it's becoming a non-player character in the campaign. It's not the only way to tell, but it's the way I've been tell, able to tell the easiest. When they start telling me stuff about the ship or asking me stuff about the ship between games, specifically about the ship, then I know that, that we're in a ship that they love. The most common ship that they've, my players have bonded with is a trader of some kind. It's the one that they pay for. It's the one that they can arm, which is always important to my group. Uh, but more importantly, it's the one they can make money with. And having them start out with part ownership of a, a trader can be a great way to start a traveler campaign. Uh, the latest campaign I'm doing right now, I started them out in a uh, scout ship. In fact, the first couple of games I did of that campaign with them just picking up the scout ship from where, you know, its point of departure. And it was a lot of fun. I, I made it an effort for them to get to the starship because there was a, uh, a revolt of the uh, world government going on. At the time they were supposed to pick up the ship, they were trapped in a different part of the uh, spaceport. And what I thought would be a one-night game became a three-night game as they crossed the spaceport to get to their ship to take off before the local government could change or, or stop them. Uh, there was artillery fire going on, threatening the ship, things like that. So, so they did bond with the ship in that way that they had to it had they had to save it, but it had to save them. But again, it's a, it's on loan; it's not their own ship. And even though I know they love it, they're already working. Uh, they've made a big score in a more recent game I've done. Uh, financial, they did a really good financial score, and they're almost enough to get a down with the monies they had mustering out and some connections that they have, they've almost got enough for a down on a free trader. Actually, I'm sorry, a far trader. And 
I know that's where they're going. I know the uh, scout ship will be dropped off at a scout base soon and that they're going to go into their own ship and that's what they're going to care about. And that's what I care about. I, I care what the player characters care about. My players dictate my games. Uh, don't tell them that, <laughs> but they do. I will develop and design a game. I will run the game the first time, but I always have open ends of the game for the next time. But I will go where they're trending. So if, if they're deciding that they want to become free traders and they want to work with... Uh, this particular group is interested in contraband. They find that they can make more money and they're willing to take the risk with contraband. Therefore, that's why they want the far trader. It's got better legs. They can uh, maybe deal in some black market stuff here and there between worlds and make uh, better money faster. This is just kind of a group of ne'er-do-wells, these characters. These are uh, my uh, players, Patrick, Adam, my sons, Roy and Craig are the ones in the campaign, and my wife doesn't play Traveler, uh, and they are just a bunch of ne'er-do-wells. They just decided to kind of be outlaws. Uh, it's been a lot of fun. They, they work well with each other, they, they take care of each other, but they've decided they want to make the easy buck, and any way that they can, they will. But anyway, back to the point is now that they're on the cusp of getting their own far trader, I know that they're already planning on customizing it because I've been asked a few questions and they haven't even gotten the thing yet. They haven't even kicked the tires on it yet. But in campaigns I've done in the past, I've tried a military campaign where the player characters were the captain and crew, uh, command crew of a large Imperial ship. And while the campaign was a blast, the ship was never anything but a ship. It never developed personality because they didn't own it. So I guess what I'm saying is for the, the real personality to come out, unlike the examples I've given with Captain Kirk and uh, Adama and Sheridan, uh, those guys didn't own their vessels. They just identified with them. And the, the vessels or the space station in Sheridan's case became kind of a non-player character. But for Mel Reynolds, Serenity is his, his way of getting around the world way of not being tied down. He's free, even though he's tied to the ship. It's a great dichotomy with the character. And then, of course, the crew of the Rossi. The Rossi represents freedom, uh, although in Season 5 they seem to have forgotten that and they split everybody up and we're barely on the Rossi. But anyway, enough complaining. Uh, so my point is that you can start a game and run a game, and you as the GM can make efforts to make the ship a character. You can give the ship little quirks. There's plenty of quirks that are called out in High Guard. There's even a couple that are called out in the core rulebook. Uh, you notice I don't show my copy of High Guard. I don't have one. I was going to buy one when I saw that the update's coming out, so I held off. So I'll be buying the update, and I'll, I'll take a look at that then. But uh, unfortunately, uh, until about a year ago, I was doing the whole, huh, I have the old stuff. Why do I need the new stuff? And boy, was I wrong. I need the new stuff. The Mongoose stuff is great. But anyway, back to my topic, the Starship itself can have quirks or little foibles. This door lock sticks, this, this pressure door closes slower or faster than it's supposed to, and they, it's things they have to tweak. And all that helps to build the ship as a non-player character. You can also have the ship get injured. It takes damage, maybe in a bad landing, maybe a pirate attack that they escape from. Now they've got to care for it. Because if they don't care for it, it won't care for them and they won't get home. But also they have to uh, put money into it and, and repair it and heal it. So then eventually the players will start identifying with the ship and the ship will take on a life of its own. But it works best in a small campaign where they own the ship, at least in my experience. Uh, if you've had different experiences, I'm certainly interested in, in hearing about them. But my experience has been that if they own the ship and they're paying the bills they start to care for it a lot more. It's like the teenager that's given a car. Uh, they may not take care of it as well as a teenager who's busted his rear end to earn the money to buy the car. It's the same kind of mentality. But you can make the Starship a player non-player character in your campaign. It just takes a little bit of effort on your part and uh, knowing your players. So that's all I've got to say today. I, I hope this was helpful. Uh, it's just something I've used over the years, and I, I find the best traveler campaigns that I've ever run are the ones where the players love their ship. So that's it. Uh, that's all I've got today. Please, uh, if you like what you heard and saw, please like and subscribe. As always, always looking for subscribers. 
Uh, I have a Patreon going right now. I'm trying to expand the channel a little bit. Patreon, I want to thank all my patrons who have who signed on. I need it to grow a little bit more before I can really do much of anything. But uh, So if you can take a look at that, uh, I'd appreciate it. Anything uh, you can do would help. And uh, that's it. That's all i got for today. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time on page 121.